Hello and welcome to class. This is class one of AutoCAD 2D. My name is Craig Bailey and I've been a long time user of AutoCAD and several of the civil engineering oriented variants. This video has been developed as a supplement to a semester long course which is delivered to students at New Hampshire's NHTI, Concord's Community College. Today we'll be going over course policies and the syllabus. We are recording meetings. We'll end this class with an introducing the AutoCAD interface and how we interact with AutoCAD. And without further ado, let's begin. So tonight is our first session of AutoCAD 2D. And what, what does that mean? That means AutoCAD is the granddaddy of them all. It is one of the oldest uh, CAD platforms on the planet. There was parts, there was uh, renditions of AutoCAD in different versions um, as early as 1980, 1981, depending on who you believe. And so it really was the first uh, commercially available and successful CAD platform that was designed for microcomputers. And that's, that's what we all are, are used to, microcomputers. If you were around in the 1970s, um, uh, the, the typical computer was much larger and generally uh, filled a, a room at some big company or university. And they were not Windows or Macintosh. They were always a different type of uh, operating system, sort of like Unix or, or Sun Spark Station. So these, these were big computers. They were not considered microcomputers. It wasn't considered a personal PC. And that's what you and I are all used to nowadays is a, is a personal PC, which is what PC stands for, personal computer. So AutoCAD's kind of the, the beginning of it all. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I, um, I just wanted to, to say, let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna start to share the screen. I'm gonna share, uh, yeah, okay. Here we go. I'm going to share just the website for now. Okay. I am sharing it. So uh, before I, before we go even further, um, just wanted to welcome back some of the students that I've had before. Uh, Genevieve, thank you very much for coming back. I appreciate your, <laughs> your vote of confidence and uh, looking forward to it. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, I don't recall anyone else. I also am teaching the civil 3D class. And so a couple of those students have been through the surveying program, which is what I also, um, I also teach that every now and then. All right, so here we are. Um, oh, sorry. <clears throat> here is what you guys are seeing coming into Canvas. All right, so this is the, this is the website. I believe everyone has been into Canvas, um, and I can verify that in a minute. But if you haven't seen Canvas, I don't know how else you would have been here tonight, <laughs> because I I put the Zoom meeting information on this little page right here. And so if you click that page there, um, these are all fully clickable links, and and uh, obviously you guys all hit that so you because you're here, all right? So. It is important to note that the um, Zoom meeting number is the same for each one. And I set this thing up as a recurring meeting. Um, and I'll do my best to, to open it up so that you guys can get in before I get here and you can, uh, you know, complain about me <laughs> before I get here. So the other thing, so back on the home page of the, of the, uh, the web page here, we have the syllabus and let's go ahead and and talk about the syllabus. Um, I hope you've all read it. You probably have at this point. So I'm going to click that PDF, and that'll come up as a new tab. All right. So I just want to—I do want to take the time to go through this, uh, as boring as it is. I won't read it out ver verbatim because I know you all can read, but I do want to show it. Um, and so here we are. It's a three credit class, uh, no, no lab technically on this class. Um, 
This is the intro to CAD for AutoCAD products, um, and I should say AutoDesk products. AutoDesk is the company name, AutoCAD is the program name, and this is the intro to that platform. There are many other CAD platforms that are based on AutoCAD, sold by AutoDesk. And for example, if you are a mechanical engineer, or a civil engineer or an electrical engineer, there are different versions of the CAD platform, <clears throat> all based on AutoCAD. If you were to end up going into industry as an engineer or a designer, um, interior design, for example, or drama set design, for example, if you know AutoCAD <clears throat> and how to operate and interact with AutoCAD, you'll be able to handle pretty much anything out there. All right. Um, at the end of the class, we want to basically be able to start the program and provide and produce dr measured drawings that are professional looking and that any uh, user could use to design and build something. All right. Two-dimensional, that's why it's called AutoCAD 2D. There's another class after this in the spring called AutoCAD 3D, which is an extension of this class. Um, and it's funny because some of the textbooks that we're using here, actually, in order to get the, the comments and the, the considerations driven home, they actually use 3D models to teach AutoCAD 2D. Um, so don't be afraid. All right. Um, Required knowledge, this is professional level software. This is um, probably, it could be so, for some of you, the most complex piece of software you've ever used. Um, those of you who have worked in industry uh, may have used AutoCAD before. I tried to do a poll, but it, I guess you can't save polls. I, I wanted to see, I wanted to gauge the room and see who, who what you have done before, but we'll um, maybe just do that by uh, show of hands. So it is a prof professional software. Um, in the concept of drawing, line drawings, yeah, that's pretty much it for AutoCAD 2D. We basically are drawing, um, but what we're doing is we're laying the foundation for designing and modeling. And so CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. And you, you could also see it as C-A-D-D, Computer Aided Design and Drafting. Um, we really are moving towards just the modeling side of things. Um, our class this semester is, is kind of the, the throwback. So this is honest to goodness fundamentals. It's AutoCAD 101, literally. All right, um, course textbooks. What I wanted to put out there was these 2020 version books, and you guys should have had uh, access to this list through the college, and so hopefully you have uh, acquired the books. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to my Zoom program here. Um, yeah, I've got a, I got a hand raised. Let me see if I can stop the share, and uh, go ahead, Genevieve. I was just going to say, I was online on the bookstore page today, and it only showed the 2020 version of the technical drawing, and then it didn't actually show the other book. Uh, so I, I did order, I found them online on another source, but um, I just wanted to verify that it was, that you wanted the 2020 version, because uh, that's what it says on the syllabus, so. Yep, the reason why I did, and so here's the, here's this year's, 2020 um, is green. It's the mm -hmm. tutorial first level. Let me see if I can get a better screen screenshot on that 2D fundamentals. And the now they also have this book out. This is the 2021 version. It's almost the exact same book. And frankly, it's almost the exact same book as the 2019 version as well. What I wasn't able to procure was the 2020 version of the technical drawing. 
This is kind of the companion book that we use during class. We're going to use this for uh, lab uses and lab kind of projects. Honestly, folks, the version, the difference on these textbooks from 2020 to 2021 is a handful of periods or commas. It's not, it's not much. So that being said, um, I've got both. I got the 2021 and the 2020. If you guys come up with any issues, let me know. We'll, we'll sort it out. Um, and by the way, I, I still also have the 2019 version of technical drawing. They, um, they send professors these books for free. So beggars can't be choosers sometimes. So that's what I've got. Um, there's also, um, I've been going through this book here. This is our primary textbook. Um, I've been going through here and this year they actually do have a code for exclusive bonus content and all that. And so go ahead and, and, and do that. That's in the inner cover of the textbook. Um, you know, you can't read my code cause that's free, but there's your code right there on the inner side of the textbook cover. Download it. Um, try to save those videos to your hard drive somehow because they'll probably go away at the end of the year. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of resources out there in the world through uh, through YouTube, but those textbooks, I'm sorry, those videos through that textbook are probably ideal because it's tied right to the book. Of course, then we have us, and and we're going to be doing this live together, anyways. So I'm going to go back to. Um, Sharing the video, sorry, the, uh, I'm looking for my, uh, I don't want to share the screen, I want to share the program. Oh, that's what it is. All right. <clears throat> it's labeled silly. <clears throat> It, it was it was saying to to share Microsoft Word dash 2020 fall. Let's see what that does is it, is it labels the the uh, menu bar. And so I should change that PDF to get, to get rid of that Microsoft Word crap. All right. So any other questions before I keep going on on the textbook? Does it? Who here does not have a textbook? Go ahead. I don't have a textbook yet. Is it on its way? Yes. Okay, very good. Well, I do also don't have one yet, but it, <clears throat> I ordered it. Okay, all right. I'll do my best to uh, assist you guys through the assignments, okay? They're cheap enough, get them. Um, try to go through the, the, the uh, school store. I, I think it's the same price on, tell, actually tell me the truth. Is it the same price versus the Amazon? Just about. Know? Okay. I need I, Amazon, but mine were fifty-five dollars each. Yeah, and that's a, that, that's actually pretty cheap for for this kind of book. Um, if you go through the school store, you know that it's legit. You know that those codes. Oh, that's another thing. If you do get it from Amazon, who knows if those codes are going to be activated or um, or ripped off? So seriously, it, just go through the school store. And these books are pretty good, so that some of them they could be used for for future reference. I All right. Know. All right. Good. Uh, software required. Windows. Excuse Microsoft Windows. Excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Sorry, I um, purchased them through the store, but both of my versions are actually 2021. That was all that was available. Interesting. I was afraid of that. In fact. That's why I said 2020. Yeah, it wasn't an option. It was only 2021. Okay. That, that's okay. That was the required. Yep. The, the, here's what I did. Last year, I required the current version of the book, and they weren't even available until October. So I've been burned. I tried to learn my lesson, <laughs> and now they're producing books. So you tell me. I don't know. I can't get it. But that's, like I said, 2021 version of the book is going to be fine. I, you and I have the same book. And um, it, it, I'll, I'll give a dollar to anybody who can identify the differences between the two versions. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. So let's keep going. Software, Microsoft Windows. This, that's not a joke. No Macs. AutoCAD. Autodesk does provide a Mac version of AutoCAD. 
and I have used it. I have it on my Mac. It's not apples to apples. Um, I'd say if I just had to, to throw a dart at it, I'd say it's 80% the same. What's highly different, of course, is these, the user interface. Okay, it's very Macified. And if any of you are a Mac person, um, which I, I like to do both, I like to have Macs and PCs. It's a cool program, but man, oh man, it does not work the same as, as the Windows version. I can't teach you the Mac version. I'm not good enough at it. And so it's a Windows class. Um, now this, this being said, notice how I got this parentheses here. I have installed Windows on my Macintosh and then I installed AutoCAD on that too. So if you're a geek and you know what you're doing, it does work, um, but I'm not gonna, I can't support that. So if you wanna support that yourself, that's pretty cool. But I highly recommend a Windows computer. And I say here, 16 gigs of RAM, recommended Intel i7 at least. They have an i9 chip now. Um, the speed of the processor is not important. What is important is that it has multiple cores and it's um, it, because AutoCAD will utilize some of these multiple cores. Um, <clears throat> I actually saw a Pentium chip of it still available somewhere, which is crazy. Don't do that, don't get a Pentium. These are these are expensive computers. That what I'm what I'm listing here is an SSD drive, a um, uh, solid state drive, because the speed of a solid state drive, an SSD drive, is orders of magnitude faster than even the the SATA uh, 7200s. And AutoCAD preloads a lot of crap when it's booting up, and so. I've found SSD is the way to go with an Intel i7 minimum and at least 16 gigs of RAM. Um, it, that computer is a laptop is a $3,000 computer. So if you plan on going to work, it's probably a good investment. If you're just gonna do it for home or school for the next three years, um, you can get away with a very nice Dell or Hewlett Packard desktop or towers or whatever. And so that's, I have seen students struggle through uh, AutoCAD classes because they had to have that tablet slate thing that, um, that Microsoft's uh, Surface or Surface Pro. By the end of the class, they had to put on um, magnifying glasses because they had blown out their eyes and uh, it just is slow and doggy, all right? And so there it is. All right, next, AutoCAD 2020. Again, um, the reason why I say AutoCAD 2020 is because all the bugs have been worked out of it. I downloaded 2021 uh, just because I need to have the current version in case you guys pull down 2021. I can't open drawings in 2020 if you guys submit me a 2021 drawing. Okay, so 2021 is out there. If you installed it, okay, it's not that big of a deal. We're just gonna have to make sure that it's it's updated. And in order to update it, you just have to run the little Autodesk app and, and do what it's and do what you're told. <laughs> Let this thing update itself. They are updating AutoCAD all the time. And so for uh, both for both um, security issues and um, I think it's yeah, it's still going. Okay. Uh, security and, and problems. And so who here has downloaded and installed 2020? Try your, try the hands. Do the, um, do the, uh, 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 where is it? Remote control? No. Um, not polls. Yeah, I think Genevieve, you're where, for the reactions. Where is that? It's next to the record button for most people. Oh, I don't see it because I'm in full screen, I guess. That could be why. All right. Okay. I can't see it because I'm sharing. Um, me, I usually me... just click on participants. Yeah. And 
the option usually come is it participants no it's not participants. oh yeah i see yes no go slow go faster okay. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah raise okay. hand is on the left cool thank you yeah, yeah so and you then you just press it again to put it down all right cool so again who has 2020 installed and functional two so far who has 2021 installed and functional three okay four lisa good who doesn't have autocad running yet Hino. okay all right um Hinnell, do you have that sorted out or what seems to be the issue on that so I just have a very old laptop that I'm currently using just like for school stuff, but I do have a computer that's ready to use. It's coming in that I can use AutoCAD on. Okay, very good. Good. All right. Um, we get this little error. All right, very good. So try to get that uh, that functional as soon as possible. Um, I was kind of blindsided this year regarding the verification stuff. Um, that used to be you you get verified. Actually, it used to be you didn't have to be verified at all. They just kind of believed it. But I suppose this year with COVID, they um, they were probably inundated. So I I had to be verified as an educational user, and so I'm glad you guys all made that work out. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about before, I guess it's not in the syllabus, but if for some reason, and Hanul, you may be in this, in this boat, if for some reason you don't have a laptop or a computer that works for you sufficiently, I do have a method of getting you remoted into the lab on campus. I don't recommend it. I think it's going to be kind of a, just as a bad experience as using an old computer. Uh, but it, it is kind of a, a last uh, option. Uh, Michelle, question? Uh, not so much a question. I was with uh, Dr. Hahn in the last, in my last class with uh, architectural graphics and sketching. And at the end of our design lab, we actually, a couple people did the networking into the computer labs to use AutoCAD and it actually worked pretty well for a lot of people. There were a few issues because somebody, a uh, few people were using Macs, but aside from that, everybody seemed to get in just fine. Good to know. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Well, then, then if it, you might want to try it. Um, let me know anybody who wants to try the remote method. I have it uh, printed up. They've they've got it on email, and I can get that over to you. Um, well, shoot, I'll just I'll figure it out and I'll post it on the on the Canvas site. I'll I'll put another page there for remote access. So thank you very much for that. All right, Zoom. Obviously, uh, Zoom. You guys are all here, so that's working out just fine. Um, I did use uh, in the in the past. I have used YouTube, and uh, in fact, in fact, uh, they might not be activated yet in in Canvas yet, but. I have a, oh, here it is, it is, it is, okay. So in Canvas, um, I have some older videos, and I know there's only two, but this class isn't that hard. <laughs> so um, there, there's, uh, in the Civil 3D class, there's a, about a dozen of them, so, but I will be uploading these sessions to YouTube as I post process, and we'll have access to it. You know, going remote may actually be a better uh, project all over together, you know, and so. All right, for additional required materials, pretty much everybody has these, a cloud storage system, uh, Google or Dropbox. Uh, I use Dropbox, I also, have, I also have Google, but you'll see me dropping into Dropbox all the time to get stuff. I, I, I work for my family company, I, live in Hudson. I'm in Hudson right now. So the background you see is my basement. I've got a little whiteboard there. Uh, this spring I was doing class for my kids. They were home. 
And so and you see the little the cute little easel, whatever. Um, but I'm in my basement right now at home. I got beautiful internet, beautiful machine. Next week, who knows where I'm going to be? I could be in Guilford at the office. I could be up at camp and you never know. And so uh, I have to have my files accessible anywhere. And that's why I prefer Dropbox. Google Drive is good. Uh, it's free. I think you can get like two gigabytes for free. And also you guys also have Microsoft OneDrive. I've been trying for the life of me to try to get the, the school to help me get these OneDrives mounted as like a Z drive or like an S drive for you guys. It just, um, it's, it's low on the priority. So I don't know, OneDrive, you can also use that, but um, it, it, it'll, it's your preference. The only thing I can say is this, Google Drive, when you guys start doing um, projects together, it, it may be, Google Drive may be the, the preferred, okay? But <clears throat> I'm still reworking the, the projects side of this class. Knowing that, and now knowing that we're fully remote, we may have, no, we're gonna have a different approach to projects. All right, any questions up to now? I know I've been blathering on. Go ahead, any questions? Deb, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> just two questions. The first one is, obviously I didn't really pay attention and I got 2021 everything. Can I go, should I go back and try to get rid of the 2021 and get AutoCAD 2020? And then the second one is, I saw that you want us to send you um, our license. I have no clue where to find that. Good. Both of those are really good questions. Uh, first off, no, God, no. Don't try to back back this down to 2020. 2020. Um, AutoCAD, Autodesk products are big. If you, you, if you guys noticed, if you were able to successfully load it and install it using the web installer process, congratulations. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I had to, because I've had different versions of AutoCAD on this computer, I wasn't successful doing that. So I had to download the bits and pieces of AutoCAD. It came down in three files and it was like eight and a half gigabytes total. And so it's a, it's a pain in the butt. And so no, Deb, stay with 2021. You'll be much happier there. Um, the, and again, these are, for anybody who wants to go to work and use this AutoCAD at work, don't do that because this is the educational license. And what that means is when you produce a plan or a drawing and you print it to PDF or you print it to the plotter, you're gonna get a watermark on it. It says developed within educational license. And there's no way you can get rid of that. And so what that means is if you try to turn in plan plans to the town of like Concord, they'll know immediately that you're, that you're not using a professional license. And that's, that's not cool. Um, so stick with what you got that it's working. Um, the differences between 2020 and 2021 for us, because we're doing the fundamentals will not matter. Um, now if somebody has like AutoCAD 2016 on their computer, eh, no, I'd, I'd have you at least add 20, 2020 on there on top of it. And so does that, does everybody get what I'm saying? Just once it's working, let it work for the year, then then go ahead and try to update it. Any other questions on that? Uh, just about where we find our license. Oh yes, there's a, the other question. I noticed that too in the homework. Um, back in the day, like last year, in order to do this, to get it installed, you had to literally copy down your license number from, from the, the website. And the, what I did there for is I asked the last four digits just to prove to me that you guys did that. Um, this year, you really can't get to your license. I suppose you can, um, but the licensing has changed so that the license for AutoCAD is tied to your username, which is Deb Kuhn at ccsnh.edu, whatever it is, okay? And so, no, I'm gonna change that assignment I, I, I couldn't get it if I wanted to. <laughs> so don't worry about that. So thanks for the, thanks for that um, heads up. All right. Thank you. 
All right. Any other issues or questions so far? And we'll finish up the uh, the syllabus. Hearing none, let's move on. Uh, Canvas. Uh, obviously, you've all been into Canvas. And here is our Canvas. I'm in, see how I've got this little purple bar down here? I'm in student view. Uh, so this is should be what you guys are seeing. I have much more to show. I just don't want to uh, show all my hands of, of my cards yet. So this is what you're seeing. The home page brings you into this this link over here on the left. And what we have is the in the announcements and the syllabus and YouTube. We've already seen a couple of these. AutoCAD supplemental files. We'll get to this uh, probably next week. We have some um, files to to customize our installations with. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I have lesson plans. So basically, I've I've kind of basically uh, laid out this class for the first ten lessons at least where I want to go with it. And so you can you can follow along here, and, and it gives you an idea of what we're what we're actually going to be into. So. And it's all up there 24 seven. So go ahead and uh, spend some time there. For example, lesson two is basic construction items and blah, blah, blah. So back to home. Um, all right, we've got the Zoom, good announce. All right, announcements, let me click to the announcements page. So when I need to do a broadcast message to you guys, I'm using announcements. It's better than, in my humble opinion, maybe not so humble, it's better than email because I'd say most people in this planet now has some sort of a iPhone, Android phone, tablet that is always on and it's always in their pocket. And if you can get the app on your phone, who here does not have the app on your phone? See, you already got the app. And so when I make an announcement, I, it pops up on your phone and you're driving to work or to school and you can have one more item to have to go home and get when I ask for it. Okay. So that's kind of why I, I do the announcements. It just, it's so tied into everything. Um, we've already been to the syllabus. Okay. Uh, course summary. These, these course summaries are the items that are published and you can go and look at. All right. So here's lesson one homework. We, I generally try to do a background, required items, and the drawings required. And so please read the assignments. Don't just, don't just go to the deliverable. Read through the assignments. It'll make your life easier. Um, all right. Let me see here. Uh, here it is. Um, oh. Um, well, Genevieve can't hear me. Uh, who, who can hear me? Does anybody, can anybody else hear me? Okay. So it's not on my end. Um, I, and I'm typing to Genevieve right now. I think my microphone is working. Genevieve, how about now? Can you hear me now? How about now? Sorry, guys. All right. Well, we'll um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Genevieve. Um, try exiting the Zoom meeting. I'm typing to her right now and re-enter okay all right uh so what so what just happened was uh in the zoom meeting i got a chat notification uh one of the students genevieve said she can't hear me and so i um i i typed back maybe she can figure that out <clears throat> but anyways we'll have the recording so she could she can record uh watch the recording later that won't that be fun um where were we uh, discussions. Let's go to the discussions page. 
these discussions are public through as a class. And what's going to happen is one of the somebody's going to say, well, how do you do a save as to a to a template or how do you explode a block and the discussions pop up on our phones. I can see them. Everybody else can see them and People, other students, I'd like you to respond. Okay, I, I don't want to be, first of all, I won't be able to respond all the time. Um, I, I work full time and right now the work is coming out of the woodwork. So I am just beyond be busy at work. So I probably won't see them until the end of the day anyway. So go ahead, if you're a student and you understand the question or the answer, that's what these discussions are for. Some teachers actually make you guys like do a three discussions to get points. I'm not, I'm not that way. It's a technology class, but these are, these tools here are very good. Um, the assignments link, let me go ahead. It's trying to, it's trying to get there. Okay, here we go. Um, the assignments, it's listing the things that are due. All right. So right now everybody has, four assignments that are published and, and due. We have homework one, due to September 8th. And if I click that, I think I've already clicked this once. Okay, here it is. And I'm gonna go back. And lesson lab one, this is tonight. We're gonna do, we're gonna get to there tonight. All right. And back and the portfolio. Might as well talk about the portfolio. The portfolio, oh, it is locked until December 1st. Sorry guys. Let's talk about it anyways. The portfolio and, and in order to do that, let's go back to the syllabus. I'll, I'll come back to the instructional thing. De -de -de, de -de -de. Portfolio required. Okay. Back in the day, like last year, students actually had to print um, the portfolio on paper. I would have them bind it and we at the department save it. Why do we want your portfolio? twofold. Firstly, it shows the student their progression. And so the work in the first couple half of the portfolio is going to be kind of rough around the edges. All right. By the end of the portfolio, your work is fantastic. And so it shows a, a clear progression of improvement on AutoCAD. The other half of it is if I now have physical evidence that I taught you something. And so when the ABET accredited it, the ABET accreditation board comes to NHTI. Um, we then show them this great big uh, shoebox full of portfolios and say, look, students actually do learn something. Okay, that's why the department holds on to it. From this point forward, COVID times, no paper, it's just gonna be PDF. And so we can actually use AutoCAD to publish this thing into one great big PDF. I'll show you how to do that later on in the year. <clears throat> But if you have Adobe or uh, Nitro PDF, I think there's even some freebie PDFs out there that you can like combine different PDFs into. And then you need to upload this PDF to me. All right, so that's your portfolio. This right here, following specifications. I guess, it, Notice I say, if a hard copy is printed, if you do want to print it, and you might want to print it. Look, AutoCAD is, AutoCAD class is what? It's a, your first entry into AutoCAD design. And so when you get out of school or you want to change your jobs from into a different career path, to have a printed portfolio that shows, when I was a student at NHTI, I started here and by the end of the, the semester, which is only 16 weeks, I could do this. That's why you want a copy of your portfolio. And, and I usually just send students down to Kinko's and they just bind it. And at that point, it's just, it's fast enough to have them just make two copies. So if you make a hard copy, send it with a clear, clear cover to me with a back cover and uh, we'll, we'll st keep it at the college. All right. Um, back, I'm scrolling back up into the, Syllabus, Canvas, okay, good. 
I think I want to rechange this syllabus. Um, does anybody have any issues with Canvas at all? Okay, cool. Who's who's this is their first entry into Canvas? Is anybody has everybody ever used Canvas at least once? Good, good. Cool, cool. Then, then you get it. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the teachers at NHGI, well, all the teachers at NHGI were, were commanded to use Canvas. In fact, they were commanded to use Blackboard before then, too. And it, it generally, for the most part, for the, for the older teachers who have been there for a long, long, long time, they just uploaded the syllabus and that's it. Because I, I, I do technology, um, I probably overuse Canvas. All the assignments are uploaded through Canvas. All the quizzes, I don't have any quizzes in this class, but all the quizzes, all the exams, I, I push those through Canvas. Um, the assignments, the grades, everything is in Canvas because, like I said earlier, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, let alone in three weeks. So to have everything on the cloud, it's, it's good for you and for me. Um, I'll do my best to to grade the homeworks as fast as possible, and to have those um, to have those available in the cloud. Oh, all right, Genevieve just took off. Um, it really does make it nice. Okay. Instructional approach, Edge. If anybody's a Boy Scout, you've, you've probably heard of Edge before. That's where it came from. Uh, explain, demonstrate, guide, and evaluate. I can't do it for you. I can't learn AutoCAD for you. Shoot, I can barely teach it. The best I can do is guide you through your examples as a, and guide you through your experience. Um, in order to learn AutoCAD, you have to use AutoCAD. And in order to use AutoCAD, you've got to, you have to put up a little bit of pain. This is a big boy program. It's going to have problems. It's going to crash your computer. You're going to crash it. Um, because if you're new to AutoCAD, there's a specific way that it wants you to interact with it. And humans have this, have this method of, well, I wanted to do this, damn it. <laughs> um, but professional software generally doesn't handle that well. So you're going to be frustrated. Uh, so I'm going to explain how you do this. I'm going to show you how we do these things. And then I'm going to guide you. And the guiding is go do your homework. You can't do this class if you don't do the homework. In fact, we'll get to the, the homework um, oh, right here. 45% of your grade is homework. That's pretty high. That's very high. And it's, it's high on purpose. You cannot learn AutoCAD if you don't use AutoCAD. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of, Genevieve is back. Genevieve, can you hear me now? Yes, only minor Zoom frustrations. Yeah, very good. You're the first of many, I'm sure. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what what I, we really haven't gone through much um, that you haven't seen. Okay. Uh, it'll be recorded anyways. We've just yeah. handling the the syllabus and we've walked through through Canvas all the way from the left of home all the way down through assignments. Okay, super. That's all we've gone through. Fabulous. <clears throat> all right, very good. All right, so we have some labs and the labs are going to be basically in class work. You'll have until midnight that night to get those labs into me. Um, they're, they're only 20%, so they're not huge. But if you don't do the labs, you can't get a, you can't even get a B in this class if you don't do the labs, right? So attendance is, is required. Homework is huge. Labs, you should do the labs. Project, now we have 20% of the grade total is the personal portion of the project and the team port, and the other 10% is team. And I'm still not sure how I want to handle that yet, but we have time. We really, what, what happens is after Thanksgiving thereabouts, we start to 
everyone has a really, really good understanding of AutoCAD, and now we can start to have fun with it, and so we can start to branch off into into um, the project. So we'll get there. Hard to talk about the portfolio. And this is because this class is required for um, the architectural uh, program. The final grade below 70 is considered a failing. All right. So even though some of you may be in the CAD uh, certificate, and in fact, if you are in the CAD certificate program, I think it's still the same deal. Below 70, it's a, considered a failing grade. And so um, that's just be forewarned. It's the homework isn't hard to do and to get a full credit on the homework. It's kind of like one of those situations where beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? In the beginning, if your drawings are less than artistically beautiful, it's not really, the, that's not the point. Okay. The point is, are you using the tools? Are you following directions? That's kind of where we're going. So, I think that's, oh, course schedule. Good. Uh, tonight, we are doing the introduction to the UI. I'm going to get to that next. How do you install? I, I thank, thank God we did the download install earlier. Um, and we'll get to the basic PDFs tonight. Um, yeah. And then all the way down to December 15th. Advanced topics. We, by by uh, like I said, around Thanksgiving, these these four and five, we um, we're we're having fun at that point. And lastly, notice how I've got certification exam. Um, I'm going to stop the share just a minute here. In the world of oh shoot, I didn't bring it down. I'll bring it down after our break. Um, there's a, there's a certification exam, um, that we can, we can work with the school and, and get you into that if you want. Um, it's, it's based through Autodesk and, um, if you can do this class and there's a special manual just for that, you could do that or the project. All right. And so I've yet to have a student take me up on it, but this may be the year, who knows? All right, um, gonna go back to the sharing. Uh, email response time, like I said earlier, try not to email me. I get a lot of email and um, it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be rough. So try to handle it through Canvas if you, if you don't mind. Academic and sell, you can't cheat. Um, cheating's actually pretty easy in AutoCAD, right? All I have to do is find your buddy who took the class last year, but there's no doubt that I'd know. So that doesn't really help you much at all. Uh, we talked about that uh, portfolio grades. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try it continually through Canvas. I, that's my goal. <laughs> my goal is to you. Uh, you are able to um, hit your Canvas, and you're supposed to be able to hit this grades link, and you're supposed to be able to see your grade. All right, down here. Um, I'll do my best. I, I promise to do my best. All right, late assignments. Um, habitual late assignment turn inners, they generally do pay the price eventually. I'm usually fairly reluctant to do it, but we may have to now that we're we're doing it remote only. So Every day that it's late, I reserve the right to take one seventh of the total points available away. Okay, so if an assignment was worth seven points and you turn it in on the day that it's due, you get seven points if it's good. And if you wait seven days to turn it in, you could get a zero. All right, if it's a seven point class, seven point homework, even if you did it perfect, right? Even if you did it perfect and you wait seven days to turn it in, I can nuke seventh of the of the points every day, and I can assign a zero. I do that. Um, like I said, I have done it before. I'll do it again if I have to. Um, 
we all, most of us are working, most of us are, are, are going to school full time, so I get it. Um, you've probably got kids or wives or husbands or dogs or, or you work for the, you know, the family business. I mean, I, I get it. Trust me, I'm there. So there, I am pretty flexible. Uh, but if you, if you take advantage of it, I will hammer it down, okay? All right, academic affairs. Let's see, um, back to here. Back to the home. Uh, I think it's probably in the syllabus, actually. Yeah. On the syllabus page, we mash that link there. We bring up the academic affairs notice, and there's right here. And what this does, what this is, is the classic, you know, dates that you have to withdraw, the dates you can drop, blah, 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 with a grade of W or whatever. Uh, you're supposed to read all this. And for the most part, it's common sense, honestly. But it's here, and um, ACE. The the president was talking about ACE this this uh, this afternoon. I took a I was on a faculty call, and um, so the Academic Center for Excellence is um, is still available, and ACE online is a thing. So uh, accessibility. If you have issues there, um, we we can comply. Classroom recording. Um, students are not permitted to record any class lectures. That's because I'm doing it this year, all right? And so I will do that. Uh, again, the video, I don't need to see your video stream. I don't wanna see the, your, the car that you're driving. I don't wanna see um, your kitchen. There's just no need for it. As you can see, we're, we're sharing, I'm sharing the screen here. And then when you guys have questions, I'll probably ask you to share your AutoCAD and not your screen. So. There's a way, let me, let me stop this share while we're doing this. I'm gonna do uh, stop share and I'm gonna share my screen again and I'm gonna screen share the whole screen. So now you can see my whole desktop. You can see me, you can see it's probably like a, who knows, windows that goes in forever. You can see all my desktops, all my icons. Um, and let me see right here, here's your, here's this. But what I'd rather you do, I'm gonna stop the share here. What I'm going to rather do is share the screen and this time I'm going to just pick the application. And this way you don't see my desktop, you don't see my icons, I don't see your fluffy bear wallpaper on your on your Windows computer. And so we're going to keep it professional. All right, um, cross-cultural education and uh, English as a second language, we have that. I talked about cheating already. And here's the actual policy, okay? Uh, cancellation, delayed start. You know, you laugh, but I, I bet you we could actually have a, a delay or cancellation. Um, a lot of my work is uh, at night. I have uh, I have to attend planning boards or zoning board meetings. So I'll do my best to to minimize those disruptions. And so I, I may have to delay the class an hour or, or, or whatever. So all that stuff, if I have to de the delay or cancel class, it'll be through Canvas. And for whatever reason, if NHTI closes because of weather, that's what they're talking about here, the NHTI alerts system. So make sure you sign up for that, all right? Um, they used to call it RAVE, R-A-V-E. I don't know what they call it now, but grade reporting, student athletes. All right, just read all this stuff. CCS NH emails, okay? Uh, probably all of us have a Gmail account. All of us probably have a work account, but I still need you to use your, obviously you already have. You already have done this. You've used your CCS NH emails, okay? So use that, that's, that's classic. All right, academic, blah, 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 read that, okay. Um, let's see. Any questions yet? Now that I've I've gone through the syllabus, the academic affairs, the AutoCAD, the textbook, anything, anything, anybody? Okay. Why don't we take five? Let's take a five minute break and I'll try to start back up at seven um, for a bathroom break or go up and get a Coke or what I want or a coffee. And uh, we'll start back up and we'll get into AutoCAD. All right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna mute and shut off my. Well, I'm gonna actually share AutoCAD. All right, so I'll see you back in five minutes.
Okay, now, now I can do it. I'm going to share the program. Sharing AutoCAD. Okay, cool. And we're, we're back on record. And so welcome to AutoCAD. This is AutoCAD 2021. It will be almost imperceptibly different from AutoCAD 2018 or 2019 or 2022 even. So these things, they don't change much during uh, release to release. So this is what you start to see. What, what you'll notice is I'm logged in as me, okay? That's CT Bailey, CCSNH. That is my user login. You must be logged in to AutoCAD now. Last year, you didn't. That's one of the changes of, of the licensing. And let me try, I think I can get spotlight yeah okay everybody see the little ball now um you need to be logged in over here all right and so that little red dot is where i'm logged in you can drop that down and you can check your account details manage your licenses and this may be where you can find your actual license number let me try to do that yeah see you don't you don't even get a license number anymore you just it's just tied to your your school account okay um and so that's where your license is. And if you wanted to actually buy AutoCAD, I think it's only like $1,800 now for a year. Um, Civil 3D is like $3,500 a year, but that's your license manager. Up here in the upper right is also the help, okay? And this is actually a fairly decent help system. And, and so what I did is I just went to the little question mark, I downloaded, I clicked the down arrow and clicked help. And what this thing here is, let me move it out of the way. This is the helper, all right? And so these are some of the new features of 2021. Um, there is a lot of information. And let me tell you, I have been around AutoCAD long enough to remember when they actually printed manuals. They stopped doing manuals, like printed manuals, uh, 2008 could be even earlier than that. Um, for AutoCAD, I don't even know, but Civil 3D was, pre the pre predecessor of Civil 3D was LAN desktop, and there really wasn't any manual for that either. So they've been moving the help system onto the web forever, okay? And so you can click, these are all, these are all um, clicky clicks, and you can bring these up, and the help files all have videos. Here's a little one minute video on how to add stuff to the quick access bar. All right, and so can't, I'm not going to spend any time doing that, but the help file is there. It's real, okay, because the struggle is real. Um, what else do we have up here? I've already gone through the accounts. Uh, if you want to sign out and quit, that's where you can log out of your account. Let's say your little sister wants to use her Autodesk account on that computer. That's what you'd have to do. You'd have to sign you out, and you have to sign them in, okay? Um, about... Here is about, so this is version 47. <laughs> okay, believe that. It's, it's, there's been 47 of these things made. Again, it goes back to 1980, all right? Um, here's your EULA end user license. If you really want to sleep and you can't sleep, you can read this. Um, as educational users, though, we have full access to it. And, and I think we can use it for three years or, or maybe one year with a re-up. I don't know, it's different now. All right, close that. Now, the next thing I want to do is this little bar here, type a keyword. I'm going to type the word line and hit enter. Look at that. So what it does is you're like, ah, oh, I knew there's a command. It does, a, I want to just draw a line. So I just start typing the word line and hit enter. What it's doing is going, it's scraping through the help file. Um, and you have all these little things to draw lines. Okay, click home tab draw panel. And this is this is classic help, right? It's step by step, step one, step two, step three, right? And we're gonna go through all these, how to use specific coordinates, how to use relative coordinates. This is old school. Like if it's like literally 1983 and you wanna draw drawings, this is how we had to do it. All right, not we. I, I, I personally, just to let you know, I personally didn't start using AutoCAD until I was, uh, well, it's a family business, so I, I've been using AutoCAD since the third grade. 
and um, that was release 10, um, and that was 1987, give or take. So I've been using AutoCAD for a while. Uh, professionally, I still use it every day. I, I make a living with it. it. It pays my bills. It puts food on the table, and so that's what I've been doing. Um, so that's the little help finder. Uh, what is this little arrow? Oh, that's the arrow to click it out. See that little tiny little triangle? So you'll want get, to get to use that, okay? Get used to that. Moving to the left, we are now into the quick access toolbar, the QAT. And if I drop down, drop that little thing down there, I can customize a quick access toolbar. We're not gonna worry about that right yet. Um, use that. So these buttons here, the sheet set manager, that's pretty advanced. We may actually get to that this semester. But that's another, I'll, I'll click it and show you what it is. It's just a little window box, okay? Um, we'll get to that. This next one here is open from web and mobile. Honestly, you guys, this is one of those things that they've been adding into AutoCAD since release 2010 just to make it something to add into. Like, of course, you got to be on the mobile. Of course, you got to have AutoCAD for your iPhone. And so that's what they've been doing. Right. We're going to stick to the basics. We're going to stick to the fundamentals. This this icon here is the open. I'm going to click that file open. And this is how you can go to the Windows um, Explorer and you're going to find drawings. And I drew an old man of the mountain drawing. I'm going to hit open there on this computer. Yeah, see? <laughs> so it even, it, I, and I did, I used it in AutoCAD 2019. And so it's even telling me that the drawing was built in student version, okay? So honestly, if you're an engineer and you're billing $130 an hour to clients, and then you have some contractor sending you drawings that they quote drew because they're professional house drawers, and you see this, you know that they didn't buy the, prop, the software. And that's, that's not professional. So I'm going to hit open. So all I did is I'm, I'm opening a drawing and you can see this drawing happens to have a picture, a picture in it. And there's also that little thing there that I just selected there. That's a polyline. All right. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to close that. Well, no, I'm going to keep it, keep it up just for the heck of it. Let's keep going uh, up on this quick access toolbar. We now have uh, save and save as you guys need to know the difference and you need to use these. I'm going to click the save as, and what it does is save strong as, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a new name, old man R2021, and I'm going to drop this down. Notice all these different options. Might as well talk about it now. AutoCAD, because it's so old and it's been around for since 1980, there's a lot of drawings in this world. And every three years, on, on or about every three years, they have changed the file type, the file format. And so if you had AutoCAD, let's look at this number here. If you had AutoCAD 2006, it was saving the drawings as a, as a version 2004. And then when, when we change up to 2007, then it was a different file format. Okay, long story short, it's a thing. You, if you need to back save a drawing so that your coworkers or another uh, or a customer or a subcontractor needs to open your drawing, that's what this is. You need to back save it. And so you have to, sometimes you have to choose the, the file type, all right? And so I'm gonna just type it in there 2021 and I'm gonna use the file version of 2018 and hit save, okay? It just saved it, okay? I did a save as, and what that does, it changes the name and it saved the file type. And the next one over here is just save. Okay, quick, just hit save, bang, it's done. Whatever the file name it was, it is. All right, we've, we just did the open, there's the open again, okay? Close that, and now this button here is new. This, this new button right here, this, this page that up here in the upper left, now it opens up this box here that says select template. It defaults to acad.dwt, all right? And, and just go ahead and go with that for tonight. Okay, hit open. Okay. So now you can see I have this new drawing sitting here. I have this tab this, that shows the last drawing I was working on. And I have the start tab. The start tab 
was intended um, for like a cat manager to be able to talk to his or her uh, employees or the, the drafts people. And they could upload new things for the day. Trust me, it never really happened. Um, nothing, none of that really happened. Uh, so the best thing about the, the start panel here is you can drop this down and you can quickly choose the template you want to use. And again, I am going to choose just ACAD for now. We will use a different template next week. So now I have three drawings open. This is interesting. Just like Microsoft Word, a couple, probably 10 years ago, Microsoft Word finally opened it up so that you could have more than one document open at a time. And this having multiple tabs of multiple drawings is kind of new. All right, I'm a, let me hit save. I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to call this test drawing two. Notice how the tab is now labeled the file name. And if I want, I'm going to just show you, I'm going to hit open. And it defaults to my documents, okay? That's not the best place for it, but that's, that's what it does. And so what you see is these DWG files. DWG does stand for drawing. Back in the day, AutoCAD was used for drawing stuff. Um, and it still is today for the most part, but remember I said the industry is moving towards modeling. And so a DWG file is the document that we are creating in AutoCAD. Let me cancel. And so there's a document here that I'm, I'm doing this little green box or this blue box. Here's a document here. And here's that first document that I opened up tonight. All right. Now, keeping going on the upper part of this ribbon bar, uh, on the menu bar. Click the big A, and this big A is called the action button. And in here you have basically the same, for the most part, you have the same operations. New, open, save, save as, import, and then we have some utility functions over here. We, we can use open. Just click the left, the left part of that, and it, it, we've seen this before already. Okay, it, it brings up the drawing opening window. Okay, or click the action button. And this time slide over till we have that little arrow that the, the slide out. And now we can open a file, a drawing file, or open a fancy web drawing file, or we can open up a sheet set or a DGN file. DGN is the arch and an arch nemesis of AutoCAD microstation. Okay, so a couple years after AutoCAD hit the scenes, another, another company called Bentley came and they developed another piece of software called MicroStation, all right? Um, civil engineers around, in, around New England um, really have never used MicroStation unless you are in the DOT. Out West, um, there was much, there was more MicroStation. Uh, in fact, Cal, Caltrans, the California DOT was MicroStation for 20 years and, and it was funny because AutoCAD, Autodesk, is a California company. So there's, there's, there's chocolate and there's, there's vanilla, there's AutoCAD, and there's MicroStation. DGN is the arch nemesis, but we have the ability to open up a DGN right here. All right. And then we can hit the sample files, and I'm going to click that right there, and I'm going to use the installed right there. Um, and I don't really have any... Under, uh, all right, yeah, we do have some. So let me go to the Civil Imperial. It just open. It's a, it's, it is read only, so it, you can't like, save over it. And so that is a one of the sample drawings, and you can you'll notice that there's like a looks like a pipe or something. Um, there's a speed limit sign. That could be another pipe. Um, it's got these little drago things. Okay, we'll get to this. This really cool things, right? And so that was I found that through action button, open slide out, open sample files, and I chose that time I chose installed. This time I'm going to choose the online sample files. Um, 
and you can't see that because I'm only sharing AutoCAD. I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to share the screen. The whole. All right. So now, when I when I had AutoCAD right, and I clicked blah blah blah, open sample. What it did is it fired up um, my browser, and it brought me over to here the AutoCAD sample files. Look. Stay out of these for now. It's just going to create you. All right. Um, oh, my internet connection is unstable. I'm going to hit stop and share. Okay, I'm back to AutoCAD. I'm just showing you, I'm just giving you a tour of, of how much power there is in AutoCAD. And we've only kind of scraped the surface of AutoCAD so far. And so that's the action button open. You can do new. For the most part, you're going to be doing new, new drawing. And that brings up the template selector out of the box, the default. And um, like I said, we, we will get to a different template probably next week. We'll get to our class template. But for tonight, we're going to stick to something simple, the, the ACAD template. OK. And so any questions so far? Any questions anywhere, anywhere? Go ahead. Is anybody still awake? I have one question. Go ahead. Um, is there a specific file that you want us to save the documents under when we're doing the projects throughout the semester? That's a great question. And I have wrestled with the, the idea of trying to um, have students have a specific place to locate them and the answer is not really. Um, the, the best thing that I can offer right now is, is this. I'm going to do a file save as. And I'm going to put this in my um, Dropbox. Now, where the heck is my Dropbox? I don't have a Dropbox. I need to add. So actually, what I'm going to do is, yeah, good question. So let's do a file save as, OK? And on this drawing save as area, I'm going to right click over in this left hand. Oh, I need to get my annotate thing back on here. Okay. I'm going to left click over here and choose add. And I'm going to put my path. And, and this is because we're all using our own PCs, this actually works pretty good. On the lab, this doesn't work. The lab machines, this doesn't work at all. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up um, I'm going to fire up Microsoft Windows. I'm going to go to uh, my Dropbox location. I'm going to click up here. And see how I, I've, lo and, uh, guys, I'm using Windows 7, okay? So it's probably a little bit different than a Windows 10 machine, but you'll get the idea. I'm going to, I'm selected the location for my Dropbox folder. I'm going to right click, I'm going to copy, go back over here, name it as Dropbox, and the item path, right there. And so I get this cute little icon, I'm going to smash that new button, and there I go. And I'm going to do a new folder in Dropbox, come on, there it is up there. I'm going to call this, oops, sorry. There is a new folder. I'm going to call this AutoCAD 2D underscore the year 2020. All right, and go back to the top, AutoCAD 2D, new folder, class 01. And in here, I'm going to just give it a name. I'm going to call this um, in class 01. And so to answer the question, I can't really dictate to you where you're saving your files. It's not fair. Um, but you need to be able to organize your stuff. I happen to have Dropbox. 
you folks may have Google Drive. If so, you may have the ability to save it to Google Drive. Okay, I can do a file save as. And I believe I have Google Drive on this computer too. I don't know. Actually, Professor, um, before you get too deep into that, I wasn't really asking where to save them, more so what kind of file to save it as, like AutoCAD 2018, AutoCAD 2020, like what kind of DWG file would you like us to save them as? Okay, that's a good question. The default is 2018 for this year. So AutoCAD 2020, AutoCAD 2021, is they're going to be and AutoCAD 2019. These are going to be saved as version 2018. And so file save as the default setting is the top one on this drop down box. Choose the default. That's that's the best thing to do. Okay. Um, just know that you cannot if if anybody has AutoCAD, let's just say, for example, AutoCAD 2014 at the office. And maybe they work in the in the industry somehow. You're not going to be able to open these drawings. If you have the burning desire to open the drawing back at the office, then you've got to. That's kind of advanced, but you'd have to know that you need to back save it. Um, and so I guess I guess let's let's pause here and um, let's just ask: Does anybody work in the industry that uses AutoCAD? Um, does, uh, show of hands. Does anybody work in 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 a, in a design environment? Okay. We have one. All right, Deb. What do you use at your office? Currently, I <clears throat> we have the dreaded micro station. <laughs> Because we work with DOTs, <laughs> See? but the FAA in aviation likes AutoCAD and Civil 3D. Yep. So we have lots of arguments in my working environment. This is, I know very, I know enough to be so dangerous that it's scary about yep. AutoCAD. That's it. That's how little. <laughs> I do work in Bluebeam, which the CAD guys hate. Because yeah. I have their drawings and mark things up that I want in AutoCAD. I yep. mean, in uh, Bluebeam. And then I give it to them and say, hey, can you put this on there? And they're like, well, how did you do that? But <laughs> I work for a civil engineering firm. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, I, you know, I, I seriously don't think you, you should mess around with the, the back saving anyways. Let's just keep it. Let's keep work and school separate enough. Um, oh, oh, yeah. I, I've already been told don't open up one single one of our drawings in this software. And I'm like, okay, right. I won't. That's right. It, it will. It will be infected. <laughs> okay. Um, they're right. AutoCAD. Um, it, it really when it does a file when it does a file save. It messes with that drawing and it AutoCADifies it. Okay. And so that's that's for sure. And, uh, well, if I start doing stuff like that, then they're going to want more work out of me. So that's just not <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I guess that's all right. Good, good. Then um, for the most part, then everyone here is on the same same plane as far as still kind of new to AutoCAD, like running AutoCAD straight up. And that's that's good. Um, last semester, last fall, I had one student who worked for a land surveyor and he was on the field crew. And these guys were, were kind of expected to uh, work in the field unless it's raining. And then if it was raining, they either go home or come in and learn AutoCAD. And so he finally decided to, to learn AutoCAD. And um, that's how it kind of works. I, I, I'm a civil engineer. I'm a licensed professional engineer. I'm a licensed land surveyor here in New Hampshire. And um, I've, like I said earlier, I've, I've been around AutoCAD my whole life. And I've actually worked as a contractor for Autodesk for a while, and I helped, I helped, well, I saw the sausage being made, and it's not pretty. <laughs> and so I've been around the block a couple times. Anyway, so good. Everyone, everyone is pretty much on the same, on the same uh, level here. I'm, I'm going to resume the share here. And I think I'm sharing the whole screen. Um, so cancel that. Any other questions before I move on? Okay. 
just put your hands up virtually and um, when your eyes start to glaze over and I, I'll, I'll stop. So I'm going to go back to annotate, turn on my little flashlight thing. And all right, my little red dot is back. Um, this, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to try to get a, um, yeah, it's cool. This whole thing that I'm doing in blue, that is called the ribbon. All right. And the ribbon came into AutoCAD. It's actually this stuff because I don't, it doesn't include the tabs. Um, and I wish I had a racer clear all drawings. There we go. Okay. Um, the ribbon came into AutoCAD roughly circa 2007, maybe 2008. So for old CAD users, this is still kind of new, the ribbon. Um, because again, there was 20 plus years without the ribbon. It was just all file menus, menu driven. The ribbon, this is the home ribbon. I'm gonna click the insert. I'm gonna click the annotate and see what happens is the tools available are changing according to the ribbon that I've selected, All right? And so for the most part, in the beginning of AutoCAD, we are going to, um, I don't think my spot went on. We are going to stick to the home ribbon, the insert ribbon, annotate. Later on in the class, we'll we'll play in the par par uh, parametric, sorry, the parametric area. Um, we may do a couple tools in the view for sure. I'm not going to do a lot of manage tools in AutoCAD. Manage tools here are for um, how do we interact with other drawings? Oh, I got a question here. Uh, chatting. All right. Uh, Michelle. Oh, use it use in, in high school. Very good. Very good, Michelle. What, what, what release? I don't remember what release it was. It was my senior year of high school. We were using it for class. It, was it version 2006? might have been probably i'll be honest it was a long time ago i don't remember was there a ribbon there was definitely a ribbon though ah so I, it could have been 2004 when they released yeah it. yeah okay like i said it's it's been a while um and uh, that's how it goes all right. all right thanks very much so and so the manage tab that's back to here that's going to be uh if we're going to edit the, the drawing set layer, layer operations. No need for this class. Output, we will, we will work in the output. Um, we're gonna plot. We're gonna do some um, publishing. All right, so we'll, we'll play in there a little bit. Add-ins, nope, not gonna do with add-ins. Collaborate, nope, not in this class. Express tools. Uh, Are those tools that people have been writing over the past 30 years that that AutoCAD has finally added into the whole product. Um, so uh, old CAD operators are, are going to be using these all the time. I know I do every day. Okay, but it's, they're not technically fundamental tools, so we may not use them. Featured apps. Um, any of you who are coders and who know what Visual Studio is and who know what um, VB script is and um, not, not VBA, but v, Visual Basic uh, scripting, you can write apps for AutoCAD, upload it to the app manager, the app store, and people can then download it and, and install it and buy it for like a buck, right straight in the product, okay? Um, I've done some coding, but, I, but never have I up uploaded it here to the, uh, to the public deal, but that's, that's what it is. Coding is the way of the future, right? This little arrow right here uh, will collapse the ribbon. Three, it's a three click button there. I can click it three times. And what it does, it makes the screen much, mo I get more real estate in the screen, okay? So I'm gonna open that up and open it up one more time. 
back to normal, okay? So this is the ribbon and this is a panel, the draw panel. See how I can flip it out? There's the modify panel and there's the annotate panel, all right? Um, the little tiny arrow, sorry, the tiny triangles are super important. You have to pay attention. Look at this, there's a tiny little triangle right there. I get these flyouts, all right? Text, flyout. I have M text or single line text. Trim is modify. So the point is the triangle is super important. This, by the way, is why people who try to do this with uh, Microsoft Slates or the Surface Pros hate life in a while. Because on a 4K monitor, on a Microsoft Surface tablet, that little triangle is about the size of one pixel. And there's just no way to see it, okay? And that's the other thing, the 4K monitors, um, those are still problematic even today. Um, but I, it, it's getting better every day. All right, so, so that's how we interact with the ribbon. Uh, here's the insert ribbon. All right, a uh, couple of the other, let me get a view. And I want to see, oh, here it is right here. This is, the, this is super important. This is the properties panel. Let me, let me do that again and close that. View ribbon, palettes, palettes palette, <laughs> sorry. And click the properties button. And this is a properties, this is the properties. I'm gonna start a line, just a single line, all right? And uh, I don't need you to do one right now, but I just gonna, I want to put something in the drawing. There's a line. And now I'm gonna select it with my cursor. And as soon as it's selected, you notice a couple of things. These blue squares, these are called grips. Those blue squares show up and my properties palette now says that's a line. It's on layer zero, color one, uh, color seven, um, line type scale, blah, blah, all these properties of the object. So this line, see how I'm hoovering over the line and it's kind of like highlighting. So I select it. So I go from Hoover to select by left clicking it with my left mouse button. Now the properties panel lists that it starts at XYZ and ends at XYZ. And there's a delta of XYZ too, okay? And it gives you a length of 16.4848. All right, so here it is. This is our first object. This is our first object in AutoCAD. This is a line, and I want to tell you the truth about AutoCAD. AutoCAD is just a big math machine. It's all it does, all right? All of us who have taken geometry in, in high school or trigonometry, this is all it's doing. It's just doing trig. It's just math. And I tell other students in other classes, Remember, math never lies, but people do. And so here we have this object, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let go by hitting the escape. So I'm gonna select it with my left mouse, and then I'm gonna hit the escape button, oh, off. Selected, escape key on the keyboard, off. You can't see me. Um, well, maybe you could see me if I started the video. I got that video. I'm gonna try to turn my camera down. I wish I could like zoom it out. Maybe if I, all right. So I wonder if I were to, yeah. Now I'll, I'll figure this out later, but what it is, what I'm trying to show you here is I've got my right hand. Here's my right hand on the mouse, okay and I'm running my left hand on the keyboard. And I've been running AutoCAD long enough that I can pretty much type with just the left hand, okay? So there's L, let me, let me activate the command window. There's the command window, we'll talk about this next, okay? If the curse is in there, I can type L, hit enter, and now my, I'm mousing with my, my right mouse and I'm moving on the screen. I'm gonna hit escape on my left hand. 
I'm going to type ERAS on my left hand. I'm going to select this crap here on the right. I'm going to right click with the right mouse. I'll do that again, erase. I'll select. All right. So it's it's too bad you couldn't see that. Let me get this over a little bit. The the point is this. Um, I'll do the erase command one more time. So see that? Erase. You can't really see. I'm sorry, guys. But the point is I'm typing erase the left, hitting the space bar with my, my left thumb, and now my mouse hand is selecting the object. I hit the right mouse button. And the right mouse button acts as the enter key. All right. And so the point I'm trying to make is the faster you get to handling the keyboard with your left hand or your right hand, if you're a left person, I got a question, got a chat. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. You appreciate that. <laughs> All right. You can see the, the typing. Okay. Um, and, and, Believe it or not, the AutoCAD people back a couple, 10, 15 years ago made a big study on how can we make these people faster? And the solution was put everything on the mouse. And it, some efficiency expert finally decided that every time back in the day before 2000, year 2000 release, everything had to be typed on the keyboard, okay, line. Okay, uh, polyline, everything was key. So see how I'm jumping my hands over the keyboard? Well, that's ridiculous. You do that all day long. We're talking a, a, an eight hour day running a, a computer uh, back in the eighties. That takes time, it slows things down. And in our world, time is money. And so the decision was made um, to put the most tools on the mouse, all right? And so let's do that again. I'm gonna go to home and I'm gonna do the line command again. Click, 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 enter, right click, enter. Polyline, up in the ribbon, click, 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 right click on the mouse, enter. Notice how the keyboard hasn't really done a lot. The thing about AutoCAD is, is at least six different ways of doing everything. Everything, almost, almost every single thing up here has a keyboard control command. All right, so I can type line with my left key, hit the enter on my left hand, and my mouse needs to go. Let's say, what happens if you don't have a mouse? Okay, same thing, line, space bar, zero, comma, zero, enter. Let's go 10, comma, 12, enter with the keyboard. What just happened? I just drew a line from zero, comma, zero, which is down here at the top, at the origin, up to coordinate 10, comma, zero. Remember what I said just 10 minutes ago? AutoCAD is just a math machine. In fact, it's just a geometric math machine. And if you really want to get fancy, it's a two-dimensional rectangular <laughs> polar, it's a two-dimensional rectangular coordinate system. Even though we can talk polar coordinates, we will talk that eventually, but it's still being converted using trig, sine of this and the tangent of that. It's all being converted back to rectangular um, Euclidean geometry. And so, one of the things that we will see eventually is if I select that line and I hover my mouse over it, um, I don't, I need to maximize, uh, I'm looking for the coordinates. I gotta get the stupid uh, zoom bar out of here. All right. Um, what you don't see is the coordinates out of the box. Okay, uh, AutoCAD straight default out of the box. I wanted to see my coordinates down here. Oop, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to draw a picture. Down here, there's the generally the coordinates, all right? And so what you need to do, I'm gonna go back to my, I've got the arrow now. Bring the arrow 
the, your cursor down to the pancake menu. All right, there's the pancake menu. That's what I like to call it. So I'm going to click the pancake menu. And now I have our first entry into how to customize the user interface. The user interface for AutoCAD is by default and by definition highly customizable. And, and so what we get from that is the ability to have all kinds of tools at our fingertips. What they don't ship for, the, for whatever reason, they do not ship it out of the factory with the coordinates turned on. So I'm going to left click that coordinates and see that? Now I have coordinates that are tracking. I have my X, Y, and Z. All right. And so if I hoover over that and I select that line and I snap my cursor to that, <laughs> sorry about that, you can see that the coordinates are 10, 12. All right. And that's kind of cool. Um, what other, so, and so that's how we are, we work around with the user interface. Um, what other panels? Do we, so, uh, oh, before we go on, before I move on, my properties panel. This, that's technically a palette. My, my mistake, this is the properties palette. Notice how it's floating on top of my stuff. That's kind of annoying in this case because it's right where I'm going to work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it with the menu bar. So this thing has the see where it says properties label. That's a bar. I'm going to left click that bar. I'm going to right click. I'm going to slam it to the right of my window. There we go. I just slammed it to the far right of the, the window and it docks, D-O-C-K, it docked into the side of the, of, the, of the monitor. And now what happens is my drawing window is, see I'm, just, I'm zooming in and out with a mouse wheel. The drawing window has kind of reduced down to this rectangle here and the properties palette's over there. All right, so let's go back to the view panel, the view ribbon, and I can bring up the, what else do I wanna show you tonight? Oh, layer, yeah, definitely layer. So from the view uh, ribbon, palettes palette, I can bring up the layer manager. Same deal. This, this is a floating object. And I can, I can dock this wherever I want. I can dock it on the bottom. So I'm left, I'm holding, I'm holding my left mouse and I'm letting go and there it is. It's, it snaps into the bottom of the screen and I can drag it up by dragging my left mouse on it. All right, I don't actually, I don't actually personally ever run with a layer manager running like this, but I, I actually, um, I, gotta, I gotta remove it. Try to rip it out. There we go. I ripped it out. See how it, it goes from, from docky to floaty? And those are technical terms, by the way. Those are patented. Now, let's say oh, I want it over here, but I don't want it to dock. I'm going to hold my control key on the keyboard with my left mouth, my, my left hand. And I'm slamming it to the left. Bang, 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 bang. It's not docking. Okay. Holding the control key prevents the dock. It prevents the dock. And those of you who are using a 15-inch laptop screen, you're going to want to do that. You're, you're not going to want to dock everything because you just don't have the room. I happen to be running a 19 inch monitor right now. Uh, it could be even a 20 right now. I, like I said in my initial email to you guys, um, it would be nice to have multiple monitors so that you can put AutoCAD on the left and me on the right. All right. Um, and so the other thing about these user interface palettes, let me drag it back out to floating mode. I'm going to click this little arrow thingy there. I'm going to hoover, oh, hoover out, oh, hoover in. See how it's kind of reappearing? And so these little, this little button there, it's auto hide or, or snap out. Okay. And then the little gear icon brings you up other issues. You can anchor it, you can anchor it right. And then it, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it went over here behind the, the 
see that it went behind the properties and so the user interface for AutoCAD is extremely flexible it's extremely customizable and that is for one reason and one reason only to make your boss more money because if you can set up AutoCAD the way you like it then you're going to be happy employee and you're going to be making you're going to be banging out drawings all day long if, however, you're forced to use my way, blah, 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 the, the employee is going to be cranky and they're not going to be a happy AutoCAD operator. And so feel free to, to find AutoCAD, find your happiness with AutoCAD. Okay? And, and, and so some of this flexibility is, is built right in. Um, I lost my thing. A any questions yet? Um, I'm going to pause the recording. Okay. So what we've got here is <laughs> nice. I, it used to be able to just, there you go. Yep. Yep. And so what we just did is we just drew a couple lines. We, uh, by absolute coordinates, which is the, uh, the first exercise in the lab. And we verified that the angle was, was in fact 10 degrees. And we, we're getting way ahead of ourselves when we're talking about annotation scale, but it, I use it as a tool. Not, all, not only is it a tool, but it's also drawing. So let's do one more thing. Let's draw, let's bang out that, well, let's just say we made a mistake. We erased everything, right? Yep. And we say, oh my God, I wish I could undo that. <laughs> well, I know how to do that. We can undo that. Yes. On the, up, at the, the, up at the top of the menu, all the way to the top, there's a little arrow to the left. I have that. Yep, there's your undo. Click that once. Once more. There you go. The undo is going to be you guys' best friend. <laughs> so zoom in on all that mess down there, please, Deb. And erase your dimensions. Can, so, yep. Is there a way to move? This is what drives me crazy. I want to center that in my screen. Is there a way to actually move that up and down? Yes. Um, there's a couple ways. The first way, which drives my father batty, is when I just use the zoom wheel and I move the zoom wheel up, move the cursor to the right of the screen and zoom in, and it's going to kind of retweak. Okay. Uh huh. The other way is to use the pan command. Right click your mouse, please. You right click the mouse. Ah, pan command, and now you, you can put it right where you want it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Now, let's also, I want to also get you guys to, to see how to zoom into that little tiny 10. Click, please right click, uh, no, zoom back out. Right click again. And let's go to zoom. Let's see how it's got a little magnifying glass. Left click once. Left click with the, oh, zoom window, zoom a window. Yep, and now do your, let do a box. That's what yes. I tried to erase it. Nice, that's right. Hit escape to, to, to stop the zoom command. Select, you could, so AutoCAD, before we do anything, I wanna talk to you guys about this. There are two ways of activating a command. The first way is the conservative way, and that is start the darn command. And, and, and whether you use the button or the command on the command line, that's, that's the conservative way. So Deb, please type in the word erase on your command line. Now, notice how she's already got a list of commands that have popped up and she literally could have selected one of those commands with, with her mouse, okay? Click the erase, yep, yeah, good. The command has started. Select just the 10 dimension, please. Just this? Yep. And hit return, which is the right mouse button. Good. Now, this time, I want you to zoom out just a little bit with the mouse wheel. This time, select the 170. Yeah, you almost got it. You gotta click, you gotta catch one of the edges. There you go. 
now what I want now everybody notice how it's kind of gone a little hazy on us. We've got the grips turned on and and we know it has been selected because we just saw her select it. Now type just start typing the word erase. And you don't have, you don't have to put your mouse down there. You can just type the word erase. Oh yeah. Yep. This is this is the dynamic input. There you go. Enter. As soon as she hit enter, bang. Whatever she had selected at the time has been nuked. That's the secondary of way of, of handling it. That is select something and then act upon it with a command. That's fine and dandy. They both do the same thing. They both erase those stupid dimensions. But the second method is dangerous. Why? You don't really know what else she may have had selected at the time, do we? Okay. New operators to AutoCAD fall into this trap a lot. You may or may not have the item selected and you, then you run the command and then boom, it's gone. And then you move, go on your merry way and you complete the assignment and then you're like, well, what the heck? I know I had to put my name on this thing. I know I had typed this, this, and this. And you don't realize that you, you erased it because you had it select, you had it pre-selected. And so tonight's lesson is Let's learn about AutoCAD and let's see how do we interact with it. All right. And so you can pre-select things or pre the command things. All right, good. All right. What else do we want to talk about for absolute coordinates? Um, ortho. Ortho and dynamic. Yes, yes. All right, Deb. Thank you very much. Does anybody else like to be the, the guinea pig for tonight? know you want it. Michelle, go ahead. Very good. So Michelle has the same exact line, I presume. It's two comma two all the way to eight comma seven. Yes. All right. Please for me draw another line segment from eight comma seven. All right, we've got the telltale dynamic input rubber bands. Right now, the length of, of, of hers is 24.8644, and 20 degrees is the angle from horizontal. First off, before anybody has a, a conniption, please understand these two people use different templates. Okay? It's interesting to me. Um, Deb, what template were you, you did you start with, just out of curiosity? Um, the, the, the difference I, is, is... I thought I was still me I'm muted, sorry. The, the, the difference is immediate to me. I downloaded but, the templates that you told us to download and set us up, set up as the default through okay. the videos. Yep, good. All right. <laughs> That's good. That's fine. That, what that means is she's using the inch based template, the inch, feet and inches. And this one, we have 19.3024. Go ahead and move the cursor a little bit more. Yeah, 23.44. Those are definitely not integer inches, are they? This drawing here is probably set up for feet. <coughs> and it's, it's, I'm glad, I'm glad we see this already. Um, this drawing has all three types of annotations it has inch annotations and it has the, the metric style of one to 10, two to 10, blah, blah, blah. Um, here, here's the first question. If anybody has ever worked as a drafts person, you need to be able to answer the question, what scale are we drawing at? Okay. In AutoCAD, we are not draw we are not drawing at scale. At a scale, we are drawing at full scale. At full scale. And so that line segment that she has drawn right now is literally, if we could somehow get into the AutoCAD world, right? That line literally is one foot eight and a sixteenth of an inch long. It's not scaled. It's it's literally that long. 
All right, the math, the, the math proves that out. Okay, good. Now let's, um, I'd like you to draw that line horizontal, please. Okay, see what happens? The polar coordinate tracking system has, has activated. Go ahead and move your cursor up. The green line goes away. Move it back down. Green up. Okay. And so see what's happening is the dynamic system is trying to track, in this case, the polar. In this case, I think the polar setup is uh, every 90 degrees. Do this for me. <clears throat> There's a, uh, a light blue icon on the system tray which is a circle and a little angle symbol. Do you see that? Yes, click that please. Click it. now, oh, now the green line doesn't show up. The, the orthogonal angle tracking, polar tracking restriction is turned off. Go ahead and turn that back on by making it light blue. Okay, and go vertical. Oh, okay, go, go to the west. Say. This thing is set up for every 90 degrees. Go back down there and this time you d go to that little tracking tool and write, do use the little drop down arrow next to it. See how we have a, a check mark next 90, 80, 1, uh, 180, 270, blah, blah, blah. Go ahead and choose the 22 and a half version. Yeah, the 23 right there. Yep. Go horizontal. Okay, now go to 22 and a half. That's half of 45 degrees, by the way. All right. So that's one way of controlling the dynamic input. Now, the dynamic input technically is where right now the blue, the blue highlight is the one foot nine and a half inch dimension. But the polar tracking is activated. Now I'd like to turn off the polar tracking, turn that off. And this time, da -da -da -da, the one right next to it is a little kind of a, a symbol that appears to be the perpendicular symbol to the left of it. Yes, click that on. This is ortho. This is probably uh, the, most, um, the most used uh, restriction tool that we've got. All right, go ahead and start the line up again. Good. And so with ortho turned on, you can see that she's restricted in only left and right or up and down. No matter how hard she tries to push that cursor into the quadrants, the, the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, AutoCAD is going to restrict that thing to ortho, the orthogonal location, directions. All right. You'll use this a lot. And so the cool thing about orthogonal is you can just kind of Send the mouse out that way and type the distance of, I don't know, let's go uh, 36. Enter. Okay. You, <laughs> you did what I didn't want you to do. <laughs> did everybody see what you did? I said 36. I meant inches. And, and she typed in 36 with a little tick, little tick symbol, which means... 36 feet. When the system is expecting feet and inches, the tick symbol and the inch symbol actually are processed by AutoCAD. All right. And so this time, let's do that new line. Yeah, good. Erase. It's annoying, isn't it, having to type 8,7 every time, isn't it? So now you're in, but oh, uh, hit escape, hit escape. All right, hit return, hit return. Yep, notice how the return fires up the last used command. Go ahead and pick your eight by seven again, eight comma seven. This time just type three, six, yeah, pu push it up and just type three, six, enter. No, no, no inch symbol. All right, hit escape. Hit escape, good, zoom out a little bit. Let's, let's measure that line. Show me the, the annotate. Yep, 
measure that vertical line. There you go. And let's zoom in on that. Click it right there. Left click it. Perfect. So the units, and, and we're getting, we're kind of getting deep into the weeds right now. Let's not worry about the units right now. That's, that is kind of next. But the point that I'm trying to make is um, when you know that the computer, the, the AutoCAD is expecting inches, you can just type in the number of inches. Or you could, you could have typed in three tick, which means three feet, just like you did the 36 feet. And lastly, the ortho is restricting it to up and down and left and right. All right. And before we move on to the, and I'm going to let you guys do the, the next couple of exercises on your own, because I think we're going to run out of time here tonight. Um, before I let you go, let's, um, does anybody else want to take the, take the saddle? Thank you, Michelle. Come on, five more minutes. I'll do it if you want me to. All right, first night, I get it, first night jitters. All right, fair enough. I will go ahead and fire up my uh, AutoCAD again, and I'll do the last little kind of lesson-y. Let's talk about sharing screen. Oh, I think you got to stop sharing maybe. Zoom share. Zoom share. Okay, I think, does everybody see me now? The, the screen share at least? Okay, so I'm going to draw the line uh, from 2 comma 2 up to 8 comma seven and hit escape and zoom in on it and I'm going to select it I'm going to hoover over it I can see my coordinates are are actually 10 comma yeah yeah that those are actually relative those are actually relative coordinates aren't they well it's no big deal <clears throat> the let's go ahead and start a line and let's start it from oh I know why because I didn't hit the number sign that's right line uh, number two comma two and number eight comma seven. There, there it is. There's my, there's my absolute. All right. See, that's eight comma seven. And you notice how I just really quickly banged it out. I did eight comma seven. Those were relative from the starting point. And so eight, I think it was um, eight left, and I think it was seven up. Yeah. See that? See how the relative. And I'll prove it to you. There's seven up, eight over, which is different than the absolute of eight comma seven. All right. So the 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 book does actually go into that. All right. The the point I'm trying to make is I want to show you your your next tool that you really want to have figured out, and that is the um, O snaps. Okay, for O snaps, I want you to, to try these tonight. Uh, over here, we're going to click this little rectangular box and then the drop down. And these are the O snaps. O snap stands for object snap override. And so it should be O snaps O, but whatever. Turn off everything except for the endpoint. Have the endpoint turned on. All right. And so now I'm going to type the line command and I'm just going to hoover my mouse on that line, not at the end of the line point. I don't need to be at the end, just anywhere near that line. And it snaps to the end point of the line. Still to the end. And then as soon as I roll over past the midpoint, it snaps to the other end. Okay. So there's the, the O snap from the end, right click, repeat line, O snap from there. And so that way you don't have to keep typing comma eight, eight comma seven every time, right? Um, and so the O snaps are this little square guy, and you can turn on midpoint, center, and probably intersection for now. So if I were to draw a line just randomly across all those, and then start another line, I could, because I have, what do I have on? I have endpoint turned on, I have midpoint turned on, center, and intersection. If I start a line, 
from right from somewhere the midpoint o snap is a little green triangle the endpoint o snap is a little green square and the intersection is a little green x so you can have running o snaps meaning they're running all the time to help draft to help to help you draft with precision and so um, I'm going to uh, stop the share. Actually, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to stop the share, and I'm going to stop the recording. Well, before I do, are there any other questions um, on tonight on the UI on how do we interact with AutoCAD or any of the basic uh, drawing lines by absolute coordinates? Um, I think my only question is where Deb found the uh, templates that she was talking about when you noticed that our <laughs> things were different. Well, I, I don't want to, I didn't want to actually go there tonight. Um, uh, that's why I didn't really push that issue. The templates, I'll show you, I'll show you. Um, the templates are on our website. Let me go back to the website. And I guess I have to share, don't I? I'm going to share. Yeah, this guy right here. Okay, so I'm sharing the website now. I'm going to go back to home. And the AutoCAD supplemental files. These are where our class templates reside. And I have not even bothered to upgrade them to 2020 yet. Um, but these are the, uh, the our class templates for inches, our class templates for um, feet, and we also actually have a metric template too. Um, I, I, I've tried every year. I tried to do this template stuff on night one, and I try to talk about plotting on night one, and it's just, it's too much. Everybody's heads always explodes, and it's not necessary. I'd rather you guys just kind of get into um, into AutoCAD before we access these, and so these templates depending on the, which template you start with, you're going to open up the drawing as an inch drawing or a feet drawing or a metric drawing. We do have some metric things. Um, and the last thing that we'll talk about uh, probably next week are the title blocks. Okay. Um, the title blocks. Yeah. I, I'm making a, an executive decision this year to not do title blocks until we're ready it's always a thing. It's always a problem. And so that's why we're not going to do that. Um, does that answer the question? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, good. I'm going to stop the share and any other questions before I stop the recording? Okay. Let's uh, shut this down and I'm going to stop. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was useful and will help jog your memory from our class together. I'll see you next week. Professor Bailey.